So we're reading our final chapter of Socks by Beverly Cleary. Chapter 7 is called Socks and Charles William. And in the first part of the chapter, Socks was in the bedroom with Charles William um, because Charles William dropped his milk. And then Charles William was playing and he bumped the crib in front of the door. So Mrs. Bricker is trying to get in. She's looking right now through the window at them. Charles William pulled out the last handful of cotton and threw it to Socks. His mother was outside and he and the cat were inside. Charles William thought this situation was a huge joke. Socks was tired of chasing cotton. He lay on his side panting while Mrs. Bricker pushed at the window. Charles William did not want the fun to end. He was even willing to sacrifice Brown Bear by throwing him over the crib's railing. Socks got to his feet, waggled his rump, and sprang on the bear. Oh, Socks has been interested in this bear since the beginning of the book. Socks, shouted Mrs. Bricker through the closed window. You stop that! She pounded on the window, but no matter how she pounded on the window frame, she could not budge the window, which was too high for her. Remember that brown bear is a present from her, his, uh, from Charles Williams' aunt and uncle, right? Socks saw no reason to listen. There was nothing she could do to stop his playing with brown bear. Charles William threw his blanket out of the crib and looked for something else to amuse the cat. His sharp eyes saw a tiny tear in the wallpaper beside the door. The wallpaper is right next to his crib. He grasped the bit of paper and pulled. No, no, shouted his mother, who had papered that room herself to get it ready for her new baby. Charles William, no, no. Sus, pus, pus. Charles William blew again. He did not have to mind his mother. He pulled off a long, satisfying shred of blue paper printed with yellow daisies. All by himself, he pulled it off. Nobody helped him. What a big boy. Delighted with his skill and cleverness, he dropped the curl of paper through the bars of his crib to share with socks. He laughed so hard that he, he began to have hiccups. Oh, dear, said Mrs. Bricker. Charles William, be a good boy while I run and get a ladder. Charles William sat hiccuping <laughs> while Sox fought with Brown Bear. And then he noticed the light switch beside the door. Still hiccuping, he pulled himself to his feet and worked at the switch until he found the secret of flipping it. The stealing light went out. Charles William actually turned on the light all by himself. He had flipped the switch by the door and the light had gone up there, on up there. He had turned on the light just like a grown-up. He turned it off. Miraculous, on, even more miraculous. Off, on, off, on. The fun, the laughter, the hiccups, and the magic were suddenly too much for the baby. Charles Williams sat down with a thump and lay back with his thumb in his mouth. Gradually, his hiccups stopped. Socks, who had been distracted from Brown Bear by the light, lay panting in the middle of all the cotton. Only half sorry that the fun had ended, he was pleased that child, Charles William was learning to play. He looked up at the baby, and after a moment, leaped lightly to the top of the chest of drawers and from there into the crib. Charles William smiled sleepily around the thumb in his mouth. This had been the best afternoon of his whole life. The most interesting, the most exciting, the most fun. He had found someone to play with. Socks turned around until he found exactly the right spot beside Charles William. He lay down with his back pressed against the back of the baby, whose thumb dropped out of his mouth as he fell asleep. 
Fox licked a paw, rubbed an ear, and let his washing go at that. For the first time since he had slept on Mrs. Risley's lap, he was completely at peace. The crib was comfortable. The room was quiet. The sound of Charles Williams was friendly and soothing. Fox now had a playmate and companion. He rested his chin on his outstretched leg, but before he could sleep, the stepladder was bumping against the house and made him raise his head. Fox heard Tiffy say, Mrs. Bricker, why are you climbing the ladder? Because Charles William locked me out of the bedroom, answered Mrs. Bricker. I didn't know he was big enough, said Tiffy. It's a long story, said Mrs. Bricker. I'll tell you later. Fox watched Mrs. Bricker raise the window and throw her leg over the windowsill. She paused when she saw him so close to her baby. Fox gazed at her with a long, clear look that told her clearly, I have found a friend. This is where I belong. Fox did not take his eyes from Charles Williams' mother, and she did not take her eyes off him as she climbed into the room and slid the crib away from the door. Then they both saw Tiffy watching through the window. Tiffy, ordered Mrs. Bricker in a loud whisper. You might fall. Go back. Lucky child, William, said Tiffy, before she disappeared from the window. Fox returned his gaze to Mrs. Bricker, who picked up Brown Bear and set him in the crib. With a smile, she reached over to stroke Sox's fur, giving him permission to stay with Charles William. Only then did Sox close his eyes. The End <laughs>